Hello everyone, so welcome back to this channel. In this video, I want to show you how to attempt some of the IGCSE past year questions. Um, specifically for this video, we are going to do chapter one questions. And before we proceed to those questions, I just want to give you a big picture of how the chapter is like, a mind map. So we can see that in this chapter alone, there are three major topics, number system conversion, um, how binary can be used to represent different data and last but not least data compression so let's start off with number system conversion there are three different number system that we learned in chapter one namely binary denary and hexadecimal and binary we call them a base two number system for denary it's a base 10 hexadecimal it is a base 16 system and this system basically means that if it is a base two system. There are only two possible value for one digit, and in binary it's zero and one. And denary is called base ten because we have the number from zero up until nine, which is ten digits. Whereas for hexadecimal, we have sixteen different values from zero to nine and a until f. So just some info, and what you need to do, um, in your exam is to convert one system to another there are in total six conversions that you need to do binary to denary denary to hexadecimal and hexadecimal to denary denary to binary and binary to hexadecimal and then hexadecimal back into binary and all types of questions are possible so it's good to understand how to do each of them um the focus of this video is not to teach you how to do that. So if you're interested, you can always look back into my chapter one video to understand how to perform these um, calculations. And on top of this conversion, we also learn how to add up binary numbers and how to multiply them by doing binary shifting and how to represent negative number using the two's complement system, which um, we'll attempt some questions later. And besides numbers, binary can also represent text, sound, and images. And here are some of the terms related to that particular subtopic. For text, we have something called a corrected set, which is which are ASCII, extended ASCII, and also Unicode. That basically means that we assigned um, an 8-bit binary or 64, 16 bits binary into a particular um, character. Whereas for sound, the two terms we have is sample rate, how many samples do you take per second, and sampling resolution, how many bits do you use to record each sample. So um, another one for is image. Uh, we can, there are two key terms, image resolutions. How many pixels does your image consist of? And also color depth. Color depth basically means how many bits are there in one particular bit, pixel. So the more bits that you use, the more colors your image can be. And, and having learned that, we also will proceed to learning how to calculate file size of an image, sound, and also images. And here are some of the info about file size. 8 bits, 8, 0, and 1 bits basically represent 1 byte. And we can um, also simplify the calculation by converting 1,000 bytes into 1 kilobyte. 1000 kilobyte into 1 megabyte and 1000 megabyte to 1 kibibyte. And for your syllabus, they added something new called the kibibyte, which is used in a lot of computers nowadays. Whereas 1 kibibyte instead of 1000 byte is equal to 10, 1024. And this is basically 2 to the power of 10. All right. So, and whereas for 1 megabyte is 1024 kibibyte, so on and so forth. So this is some question that we'll perform later. And data compression, um, after we calculate the file size, is there any way that we can reduce the file size without impacting the quality? So there are two types of compressions. We have lossy compression. We also have lossless compression. And under lossy compression, there are a few methods, for instance, JPEG, MP3, and MP4. Whereas lossless compression, there is only one method that we learned called RLE stand for run length encoding. It basically finds repeated patterns in your text or sound. So sound could be finding repeated pitch or an amplitude. An image can be found um, repeated colors and compress them into something that requires less bit. 
So here is a mind map of chapter one. And for now, we'll proceed to working on all the past year questions for the, all these topics. And I just want to let you know that these questions are taken from to, um, all the IGCSE past year exam paper from 2019 to 2022, if I'm not mistaken. So they would prepare you to sit for your IGCSE exam well. All right. So let's proceed. And the first question that we are going to do is that here they said binary is a number system that is used by computers. Take one box to show whether binary is a base 2, base 10, or base 16. As explained in the mind map, binary is a base 2 system because there is only two possible values, which is 0 or 1. All right. And next up, the question. Uh, we have another two system called hexadecimal, binary, or a number system that can be used by programmers and convert all this four hexadecimal into binary value. So I have written down all four value here in hexadecimal in my working space. And I'm going to show you how to convert it into binary. So first thing first, you need to understand that for each um, number in a hexadecimal, there is a place value assigned to it. And the rightmost value has a place value of 1, followed by 16. And if you have happen to have another digit here called, um, let's say, A, uh, this value will be 256. And just for your information, this value are basically 16 to the power of 0, 16 to the power of 1, 16 to the power of 2. So you don't really need to memorize. And because um, calculator is not allowed, so it's good to know uh, what they mean here. So I'm going to erase the unnecessary thing. All right, so to calculate the hexadecimal value for 0, 09, which is a hexadecimal, all I need to do is to multiply the digit value by the place value and then sum them all up. So let me do an example here. Look at the green color pen. So I have 9 as my place value. I will multiply it as my digit value. So that's my first step. And the second step is to multiply this place value with the digit value, which is 0 multiplied by 16. And then I will sum these two value up. So 9 times 1, I got 9 plus 0 times 16, I got 0. So my answer should be 9. So the first one, you can just write it as 9. So it's pretty simple. And the second question, all right, again, I'll use my place value, multiply my, uh, my digit value, multiply by my place value. So I got 0 multiplied by 1 plus 1 multiplied by 16. So I got 0 plus 16, again, is the answer is 16. Very, very simple. You got 16. And the third question. So let me erase stuff that, oops, that I don't need here. Oh, it's okay. I'll move here. So I'm going to multiply my digit value 8 by 1 plus 2 multiplied by 16. I will have 8 plus 2 times 16. I got 32, 40. So my third answer is 40. And last but not least, we have a relatively special question. All right. So I got 1 as my digit value by place value, 1 times 1 plus a times 16. Um, just for your information, if in case you don't know, that all the possible hexadecimal value is from 1, 0 until 9. And they don't have a value called 10. Instead, they, from, they will move on from a, b, c, d, e, f. I stop at F. Therefore, there are total 16 possible values. Okay, so we can, to, um, to solve this question, we need to convert the digit A into 10. So I'm going to do um, 10 is my place value here. A is equal to 10 multiplied by 16. So I'm going to have 1 plus 160. I got 161. Here I go. Here you go. Um, we have the answers, 161. So, ooh, we got five marks. Let's go, proceed to the next, next question. For now, um, we have another type of conversion. Um, as you can see, all chapter one questions, they usually revolve around um, you converting. So it's good to learn everything here. Now, we need to convert hexadecimal back to binary value. 
So let's see how we can do it. So tick one box to show that the correct 8 bits binary value for each hexadecimal. So how we can do it is that 25 is our hexadecimal value. And the method to convert it to binary is to split it up into two different. Two is here, five is here, left and right. And just for your information, one hexa digit is equivalent to four binary digit. All right, because base two and big 16. All right, so two, to convert it into a binary code, all I need to do is to put in value here, either one or zero, to make the entire thing to be two. So since my hexadecimal digit here is two, I will put one in my two place value here and also zero in the other value. So that this hexadecimal, that this binary here is equivalent to the value two. Whereas five here is, um, I just have to find out, um, how to make my sum to be equal to five. So I can do four plus one. So my answer should be zero one, zero one. So combine to combine it, I know that my answer is zero zero one zero zero one zero one, which is zero one zero zero. So this is the answer, right? So here we go. One mark. So the second one is eight B. All right. Um, one B. So one I can do zero 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 one. Whereas B, if you remember, is equal to eleven. In so to make it. 11 numbers, so I would do 1, 8 plus, cannot plus 4, 2 plus 1, I'll get 11. So I got 1, 0, 1, 1. And if you can concatenate this result, add them all up, you'll get 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So which is here. That's it. We got our answer too. All right. So next question. Um, some, besides conversion, you will also be asked how hexadecimal is used in the real world. Give one way that hexadecimal is used in website development. Um, there are two different answers, basically. First one is to represent um, HTML color code, which, which basically looks like um, this, and maybe A5, um, 9.0, B6. So just for your information, there's some a system called RGB system. So A5 is the value to determine how red your color is. Not sure that's the right way to decide, uh, to explain. And 90 here represent um, how green you want the image to be. And lastly, blue, how blue you want it to be. And when we all mix these colors, when we mix all these colors up, we get a unique color. And the second answer is, you can write just either one, is to represent arrow codes. Arrow codes. All right, so um, that's it about it. We got an our mark. So the D for question D2, give one way that hexadecimal is used in low level programming. And there are two answers. Um, if you remember, low level programming means um, either assembly code or machine code. So you can do, um, you can write assembly language in your answers. Um, another one should be memory address because as you, code in low-level programming, you will sometimes require to access a particular registers or RAM and your program. So that's another thing. Again, I didn't go deep into a lot of the explanation because I have already made up a video on all the concept explanation. So if please refer to that video if you need more explanation. Whereas now we'll focus on working on this question. So question number two. Um, what we need to do again, another conversion question, but is to convert binary value into binary. So to convert binary into binary. And to do that, I've drawn up this space. Uh, we use the division by two methods. So after we divide the number by two, we obtain the remainder values and we compile these values up. And let me show you how this works. So to convert 71 into binary, um, look into this spot here. We just have to keep dividing 71 until it becomes zero. So 71 divided by two, I got 35.5. So I'm going to write my quotient 35 here and it has a remainder of one. That's my remainder. Just write down and 35 divided by two, I got 17.5. So my quotient is 17 and the 0.5 converted to remainder 
you win one. And 17 divided by 2, I got 8.5. So 8 cushion and then 1 is my remainder. 8 divided by 2, I got 4. No remainder. 4 divided by 2, I got 2. No remainder. And 2 divided by 2, I got 1. Again, no remainder. 1 divided by 2, my cushion is 0 and remainder of 1. And in order to obtain um, the values here, the, the answers, you need to read up this column. You need to use the value here in this column. Okay, oops. <laughs> and then this column here, let me draw a better rectangle. Yeah, it works. And then read your answers from bottom to top. This is very important. If you read it from top to bottom, you will get your answers wrong. So our answer is 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. So that's the binary value of the value 71. But if you only write it as your answer here, you only get 1 out of 2. In order to get full mark, you need to add something called a leading 0. Because in the question here, they state that the count is stored as binary in a 16 bits register. So you need to add leading bits here in your answers to make it 16 bits. So for now, I have 7 bits, which means I need to add 9 leading bits in my answers. So I'm going to add 9, 0, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So it's only you got both this correct, you'll get um, 2 marks in full. So that's the first question. And for question B, it's another value. Convert 257 and to binary. That's a long one. So please be patient. 257 divided by 2, I got 128.5. So my remainder will be 1. Am I correct? Yeah, I think so. So 128 divided by 2, I got 64 with no remainder. 64 divided by 2, 32, no remainder. 32 divided by 2, 16, no remainder. 8, no remainder. Oops, 4 divided by 2, no remainder. And I don't have in my space. 4 divided by 2, 2, no remainder. 2 divided by 2, and 0, and 1. So my answer should be um, 1. Zero. If I read from the bottom up, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven, seven, zero, three, four, five, six, seven, and followed by one. Again, if you only put this as your answer, you only get one mark because you need to add the leading zero. So I got three, nine bits here, which means I need to add seven zero here in my answers. I'm gonna add one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we get one mark by writing the leading zero, the other mark for writing the correct bits. Okay. That's about it. Um, now we have uh, a backward conversion here. Um, they said after everyone entered the stadium, the register stored the binary values. And you will need to write down what the screen would display when the binary value is stored, meaning you have to convert from binary back into binary. So to do this, um, I'm going to write it all down. I'll, in fact, I only care about this part because the leading zero will give me zero anyway. I'm going to write one. 0, 0, 0, 0, 6, 0, 1, 0, 0. So I like to do that to make sure that I got the correct answers. So I'm going to write, draw some columns. Um, so remember the place value of, we need to know the place value for each digit. And for a binary system, the base value starts from 1, 1, followed by 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, and 512. Just in case um, you are wondering what these values are, 1 here basically stands for 2 power of 0, 2 power of 1, 2 power of 2, 2 power of 3, 2 power of 4, back until the end. So um, because calculator is not allowed, it's good that you know how to construct this on your own. So to calculate the binary value, I only care about this column here and this column here because they have a digit value of 1. And again, just like how we do in our um, practice over here, we just have to multiply the digit value by the place value. So the only difference is how what the place value here. Okay, I'm going to do 1 multiplied by 4, which is my first column here and followed by 
1 multiplied by 512. So which is 1 ta plus uh, 4 plus 512, which I will get 516. If you only want 516, you'll get um, a wrong answer because it's a 16-bit register, meaning you need 4 hexadecimal value. So you need to add the leading bit. By doing that, you got your correct answers. That's it. And that's about it for um, number conversion. J um, just in case you don't know how to do it, I would recommend you to do more practices on it so that you can get full mark for your tests. The next um, type of question is to is regarding calculating file size. So let's do it. Um, Georgia is a wedding photographer and he has 10 photographs. Each photograph is 100 pixel wide and high. So to give you an idea of how this image is like, just know that this is the image roughly and it has 100 pixel wide, so 100 pixel, 100 boxes. Um, and 50 boxes here, all right? And then the the key information is the photographs are 8-bit color photographs. That means for each box here, there is 8 bits to represent the color of that pixel. And our job is to calculate the total file size in kilobytes of all the photographs. And before we calculate the Sound size and kilobyte, we need to calculate how many bytes are there in one image and then multiply by 10 to get the sound size in 10 images. And the formula for it is that we need to use the resolution multiplied by the color depth. And if you think about it, it makes sense, right? We have so many boxes, we have 100 times 50 boxes. And for each bits, each box they have eight bits. So this is why we're multiplying them. So my working will have something like 100 multiplied by 50 multiplied by eight. Oh, it's such a big number. So I have 5,000 multiplied by eight. I will have 40,000 bits for one image. And remember that eight bits, one byte is equivalent to eight bits. So I add, actually here I have 5,000 bytes for one image here, all right? And because they allowed me to use the measurement of either 1024 or 1000, I will choose the easy one. And I know that to convert 5,000 bytes into KB byte, k kilobyte, um, you just need to divide by 1,000. So KB for one image. And because they said you need to calculate the total size, you just multiply 5 kilobyte by 10 and you will get 50,000. All right. So you get 50,000. 50 by 50 kilobyte. My bad. Yeah, 50 kilobyte. I'm going to write 50 here. So that's the final answer for this question. All right. So that's about it. Um, the next question is about compression. Georgia compressed photograph to store them on USB flash drive. It is important that the compression does not affect the quality of the photograph in any way. And just a recap here, in our mind map, we learned that there are two different types of compression. One is lossy and not lossless. Lossy basically remove any redundant data or data that is not so important, and they remove this data permanently. But for our case here, because Georgia does not want the quality of the photograph to be affected. Therefore, we cannot use lossy compression and we need to use lossless compression. And regarding justification, you have to explain why do you choose this method? It's because lossless compression, all right, short form, does not remove data permanently. Permanently. All right. And which will, which means it will not, this is point number one, will not affect the quality of the image. And you could also write it in another way around. You can say that instead of commenting on lossless compression, you can comment on lossy. Lossy, remove data permanently. All right. And this will affect will in turn affect the quality. Sorry for the bad handwriting. 
And that's about it. You got two justification and you state that the correct choice. That's how you got full mark for this question. And next up, we have um, a file size comparison exercise. Take one box to show which one is the largest file size. And to make life very simple, I guess I'll just make, I'll first convert 850,000 bytes into KB, which is 850 kilobyte. I also convert one megabyte into 1,000 byte, 1,000 kb kilobyte, and this one is 999. It's the same. So from the after I convert it, I can clearly see that one MB has the biggest file size. That's this is why I take this as my answers. And the second question: Dennis has three files stored on her computer. Um, again, uh, they want the smallest file size for this time. So I will convert. Um, let me see. I'll convert this. 200, 2.5 million kilobytes into MB. I'll have five, 2.5 megabytes. And 2 GB is equal to 2000 megabyte. And this one will remain the same. So again, since I only want the smallest, so um, clearly my second one is the smallest, has the smaller file size. And that one we got for mark for this. Let's go. And data compression. So that's, um, now we're focused on doing data compression question. And it, they, they are usually quite um, long, it requires you to write, um, give a decent explanation. So make sure that um, in the following part of the video, you, you really memorize what are some of the points you need to write down in order to get marks. Because as a marker myself, sometimes students write too much, but they didn't get the point because they are not mentioning the essentials. All right, so now I will proceed to the question. Julius, um, our protagonist, Julius, created video to explain how to use application he has created, just like what I'm doing now. He reduces the file size of the videos using lossless compression. So that's the keyword, lossless compression. Describe how lossless compression reduces the file size. As explained in our mind map summary, um, lossless identify repeated pattern and then try to compress them together. So how you can get a few mark? You can, these are just some points in my, the marking scheme. It's good to memorize them because Cambridge always asks the same question. You can say that firstly, a compression algorithm is used. That's our first point. And algorithm means some steps that is applied to my, my the file in order to make it smaller. A compression algorithm is used such as the second point, when you give an example of what type of compression out there, such as my RLE, run length encoding. And since the question asks you to describe, you need to explain how RLE describe. And because they are, they are making videos here, so you can explain it in a way that says repeated frames I identified. All right. Oh, I, my um, camera doesn't work here. So let me adjust it closely. Oh, such a, ooh. and repeated frames are identified. And then our index, index. So um, if the question asks for sound instead of video. If it is a sound question, you can say repeated sound that means repeated pitch R index. And then that's how they compress it. And the fourth point, you can additional point is that no data will be removed. Remove. And last but not least, um, you can say it's recoverable. So as a marker, as a marker, I will often look at your answers and to see whether um, you got all these point mentions. So since it's, this is a three mark question, as well as you have any of the three points here, you'll get the full mark, regardless of whether your answers are complete or not. Whereas if this is a four to five mark question, meaning you have to write more points. So um, to be safe, you just need to use everything here. Um, write everything if you need to, if you know what to write. OK, 
Okay, so the next question state why Julius uses lossless rather than lossy compression. Um, a few points. You can maintain quality because no important um, data is removed. Original is original file is retained, so on and so forth. As long as the answer is logical here, I believe um, you still get the mark. Um, and that's how I mark it. Three mark, three, one mark. Okay, the next question. So um, after having videos, we have um, image. Give one example of an image file from it. You can write your answers here. One example is JPEG, all right? Uh, which is a form of lossy compression. They basically re remove. So for instance, if I have an image here with um, four times three image resolution, if let's say these two frames have the same colors here, instead of encoding it, I would just, they would just make it, compress it to have one frame instead so that um, it will take up less space, all right? Describe how a digital image file is stored by a computer. First, you need to explain how a digital image is like. It consists of pixel, all right? And each pixel has one color. I'll just write down all the points in the marking scheme um, each, so that you know how to um, answer it, color, all right? Each color is represented, is represented by a binary value. By a binary value. And you can also store metadata about color depth. So I'm just copying color depth. Right. So here are just some a few examples of how you can write your answers, describe. Um, to, uh, I'm including this question here just to enhance your knowledge and, and also show you how to actually receive points in your IGCX exam. Okay, next one. Um, Nadia compresses the digital image before sending it to friend. State what is meant by data compression. So it's not just like physically compress the file. You're basically reducing the file size of, of data, right? And second question, explain why Nadia compresses the digital image file before emailing it. Um, essentially, they are asking why, why reduce the file size, right? Um, you can talk about something really common sense. For, for instance, it takes a shorter time to upload it, to upload, and it also saves space um, on computer hard drive. On my computer hard drive, let me see what are some of the answers. Um, Reduces the time to send it. Reduces time to send it. Um, here it is. And just in case you are curious how I make um, this question here is that I purposely screenshot the question from the past question and compile them into one document. So if you are a teacher or student that would like to have um, a topical parser question set, you can purchase it in my website. Um, the link will be in the description below. All right, just some advertising here. Okay, so um, next question. HTML color codes and media access control addresses are two examples where hexadecimal is used in computer science. Give two other examples when hexadecimal is used. So how I remember the purpose of hexadecimal is that I use this um, mnemonic called E-M-I-H, E-M-E. So the first usage of hexadecimal is arrow codes. The one, media access control, control. And I stands for IP address. H stands for HTML color code. So as you are doing this kind of question, please be very careful because they have already given you HTML color code and media access control, meaning you can't write them as your answers. They said two are the example. So I'm not gonna write this, I'm not gonna write this. So I only have two left arrow codes and also IP address. That's it. So let me see what are some questions. All right, 
So the last part of our video here is about binary addition and also binary shifting. Um, I couldn't really find questions in any possible question. Uh, perhaps they are newly added into your syllabus. So I take, I've taken all this question from the specimen paper that Cambridge has published. So let's try to do it. To sum, the first question is to sum up two 8-bit binary values. And how you can do it is very similar to how you do addition for dinary. So let me give you an example here. Six. So let's say I want to add this up. All I need to do is that I would add five plus six. So which is 11. I would have my value answers here and also my carry of one. Because dinary value is, um, the maximum is nine. So if five plus six, Exceed the value, exit the value 9, I'll have 11. I'll put this 1 here at, at the other side. So I'll just continue adding it. 1 plus 2 plus 9, I got two, 12. And I'll have 1 carry here. 1 plus 1 plus 5. 3, we got 5. So this is how we do addition in binary. And to do it, addition in binary is very simple too. So 1 plus 0, I'll start off with the rightmost column. 1 plus 0, I got 1. 0 plus 1, 1, 0 plus 0, 1, uh, 0 plus 0, 0. And 1 plus 1, 1 plus 1 in binary, because there's no 2 there, so it's equivalent to 1, 0. So this will be my carry, and this will be my answers. Okay, so I'm going to write 0 here, put a carry of 1. Um, I'll do now 1 plus 1, 0 again, <laughs> 0 again, and carry of 1. 1 plus 1, 0 again. Carry of 1, 1 plus 1, 0 again, 1. 1 plus 0 plus 0, I got 1. So my answer will be 1 followed by 5, 0, and double 2. Ta -da. So that's, um, I will have 3 marks by just writing this. So please do not get it wrong. Um, I believe these are quite straightforward. And the next question, two 8-bit two binary values are added. The result of this calculation needs to be stored in an 8-bit register. And the dinary result of this calculation is 301. This generate an error. State name of this type of error and explain why this error occurs. So, um, to explain this question, I will show you how an example of an 8-bit binary here is. So as you can see, these are, this value is the maximum value an 8-bit register can take. So all want. And if you sum them all up, you will get 255. So just imagine that you add two binary values here. 0, 1, 1, 1, and you add another one. 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. And when you add them all up, so I'll do it again to refresh your memory. 1 plus 1, I got 0. Uh, 1 plus 1, 0. Carry of 1. And 3, 1, add together, I got 1, 1. 1, carry of 1. 1, 1, 1. Okay? And then followed by um, 1 plus 1, 0. Carry of 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. So you can see that because the register can only take 8 bits, let's say in, in this case, in an 8 bit register. So here, you can see that my result, after two binaries are added, my results are, has 9 bits up here. Meaning, this bit here will be lost. It will just gone, be gone. And this arrow is what we call overflow arrow, right? So um, that's basically what happened here. They're saying that after two binary values are added, the sum of it is greater than, the sum of it is 301, which is greater than 255, which is what an 8-bit binary can store maximum, the maximum they can store. So to answer this question, um, you will write here um, as my, okay, let me proceed. You write it as overflow arrow. So what they say is that because the value here, you can explain it by saying the value is more than 255. And the big deal about this is because 255 is the maximum value that an 8-bit register can take. All right. Since 301 is more than 255, we have an overflow error. And so you can also explain, according to the marking scheme, 
So all the bits required to represent, which means even if I put all ones in my value, it cannot represent the, the answers. The values cannot fit in the 8-bit register. Because you can only represent the value 301 by using 9 bits. 8 bits are not enough. Therefore, we have an overflow error. Here's another mark. Let's move on. Um, binary shifting. To be honest, this is um, a very simple question. You just need to be careful. D1. So I have a 8-bit register and they have 8 bits here. And a logical left shift of two places is performed on a binary value. So binary shifting is to multiply, but sometimes they can also be used to divide. So left shift here basically means for each bit, I want them to be shifted two places to the left, meaning um, this bit here shall be moved to here, this one here, and this one here, so on and so forth. So I'm going to move my zero here to this place. I'm going to have zero. 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, followed by the 0 here. And when, when binary values are shifted to the left, they are basically multiplied, right? And to state one effect of this logical shift, you can see that these two bits here, because they, they need to be shifted two bits to the left-hand side, and the register can only store eight bits, so meaning this bit, just like the overflow arrow, are also lost. All right. And um, the effect of this shift is that the value will be incorrect. Will be incorrect. Because leftmost bits are lost. All right. Just in case you need more information on how binary shifting work, please watch my data data representation videos to fully understand it. All right. So here's just uh, some of the question I taken it from your specimen paper. All right. The last part of our video here, two's complement. Um, they said negative binary numbers can also be represented by binary using two's complement, and they need to convert negative fifty four into two's complement. And I'm going to show you how to do it. It's very simple. Um, first step is to convert negative 54 into positive value, which is 54. And followed by um, a conversion to binary. So you will do 54 converted to binary. We'll use the division by 2 method. I'm going to do 2 divided by 2, you got 27 with a remainder of 0. 27 divided by 2, I got 13.5. Remainder of 1 and 13 divided by 2, I got 6.5. 1 divided by 2, I got 3. 0. 3 divided by 2, I got 1.5. 1 divided by 2, I got 0 with a remainder of 1. So um, again, we'll read the answer from bottom to top. So my binary value here calculated is 110, 110. And just for your information here, this is a mistake that a lot of my students make is that if your answers only consist of six bits, I need you to add a leading zero before to make it eight bits before proceeding to the next step. So I'm gonna add two zero here, all right, to make it an eight bits of binary. And the next step is to invert each bit in from zero to one and one to zero. So I'm gonna after I inv the inversion, I'll get one one because there's two leading zero here, zero zero. 1001. And after that, the last step is to perform a binary addition to get my final answers. 11001010. One, one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero. So this here, 8 bits here, will be my final answers. So you can just write down your answer here 11001010. One, one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero. Just in case you're wondering what are basically um, two's complement. They are basically the same thing as um, binary, just that there's some changes to the place value. So we start off 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 
And the leftmost bit, instead of 128, it has the place value of negative 128. So this is why um, um, the only difference between tools complement and also binary. And that's about it for this chapter. Uh, I hope you learned a lot from it. So these are the questions that I've seen most frequently appeared in the past question. And yeah, um, thank you for being in this journey with me to nail your IGCX exam. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. See you.